Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Tuesday, February 11, 2014, and this shall be a video tutorial, step-by-step, -step, how to build the rocket stove wood pellet basket for the uh, wood pellet modification. So to get started, let's first talk about what we're going to need to build this stainless steel wood pellet basket for the rocket stove. First thing you're going to need is a small collection of hand tools. First I've got a set of vice grips. I have a wood clamp. I think this is about a 9 or 12 inch opening. A nine inch opening wood clamp. Okay, not a large one. Uh, also, the caps, the plastic caps removed because we'll be using this clamp to weld with. Have a Craftsman 12.516 inch half inch drive socket. I'll show you what this is going to be used for in just a moment. Uh, you'll need some stainless steel. MIG welding wire for the MIG welder. The, uh, most MIG welders come with 30 thousandths uh, regular steel like this. The, the spool that I bought of stainless steel MIG welding wire is also flux core, does not require gas. Uh, it was $29 for the spool, for the one pound spool of 35 thousandths MIG welding wire. I also needed to buy a new MIG welding tip to, to accommodate the larger diameter wire. Uh, next item you're going to need are your actual stainless steel welding rods. I ordered five pounds of these. They are 1 8 inch diameter, 36 inch long. Five pounds equated to 40 of the rods. And uh, those were about $20 for the five pounds. And you don't absolutely need this. This is a uh, four and a half inch grinding wheel with a uh, aluminum oxide cutoff wheel on it. I prefer using this over the three inch right angle cutoff wheel because it's, uh, it's easier to handle. It's less awkward than the, than the right angle of the three inch cutoff wheel. So this is what I use. Not very expensive. If, if you watch the sales, you get these for like $15, $20 at Harbor Freight, and it's actually very good quality, replaceable brushes. I can't complain about that. Uh, you're going to need a bench vise, like the one that you see here in this photograph at the corner of my bench. You will want to have a grinding wheel, like you see here in, at the back of my bench, and if you don't have a grinding wheel, a, a, uh, a good metal file will substitute. And then last, you're going to need the actual MIG welder uh, to do the welding with. Um, this model here is the 90 amp Harbor Freight Special and I do use it at 90 amps and the feed rate that I have, that I have selected and standardized on is about four and a half. To go along with that you'll also need the, this welding helmet and these leather safety gloves and also please don't ever forget when you're using power tools to wear these safety glasses. Okay, so in this video clip here, you see that I have taken and laid my uh, welding rod out at the front edge of my workbench. Along the front edge of the bench, I've taken with a Sharpie and marked off uh, increments and uh, use it to mark off uh, the locations on the welding rods where I'm going to cut the welding rods in half so that I end up with equal 18 inch sections and then I'm also marking the welding rods uh, in the middle of each 18 inch section which will mark off where I actually make the bend for the loop for the, uh, the basket. In this next video clip I'm using the uh, cutoff wheel 
in the vise to cut my, my welding rods in half, three at a time. The jaws are not quite wide enough to accommodate all six at once and allow me to clamp them. So I do them in two groups of three, uh, cut them off with the, um, with the cutoff wheel. And in this last video clip, uh, here I am grinding off the tips of the welding rods so that uh, I remove the burrs from the, uh, from the welding rods so I don't hurt myself on them. So this is the end result. 12 18 inch pieces of welding rod, 1 8 inch in diameter, marked off halfway in the middle where I'm going to make my bend. And uh, with this particular build, uh, as opposed to this first build, version 2.1, where I took and cut out every other section with my Dremel, like I showed you earlier, uh, and then had to weld a, a, a fifth brace across the bottom center to close up some of that, that opening that I had created, which uh, did not work out very well, but the, the finished product ended up working out very well. But in this next build, I'm gonna try and do it a little bit differently, and I'm gonna take a suggestion that was offered to me by my friend Fire Pinto in my live chat room. And uh, instead of cutting out sections, I'm going to take the loops and I'm going to stagger every other loop. So we have one loop that hangs down a little bit further than the next loop, and then they, they alternate back and forth to open up the gap slightly, uh, slightly more than 3 16 of an inch at the bottom. The last thing I need to show you that I forgot is I went out to Home Depot and I purchased a, a bar of metal, 36 inch bar of metal, it's 3 quarter inch wide by 3 16 of an inch thick. I'm using these, these uh, two inch long pieces that I cut off of the bar. All right, I cut it into nine two inch pieces to use as shims in between each of the stainless steel rods as I'm welding them together. So this is how I clamp everything together and keep everything precisely spaced when I'm welding it all up. The next step is to take each of the 12 rods. Actually, I'm only going to use 11 of the 12. The 12th one I'm gonna cut into four sections and use as my cross braces. So th there really is no wasted material. But this is what I use the, the six point socket for, all right? I'm gonna take and clamp this mark that I made in the center of the 18 inch piece against the side of the uh, socket using my vice grips. And then I'm going to bend the welding rod around the socket, allow it to expand, and when it expands, it, ex it expands to the, to the correct width that I want for my finished basket. If you want to make your basket bigger or smaller, uh, that's up to you. But the, what determined the thickness of my basket was really a couple of factors. Uh, one factor was that I needed to uh, accommodate the width of my gravity feed pellet tube and uh, I didn't want it to be so thick that it restricted the, the airflow through the basket that would prevent the pellets from burning. So ideally, you know, uh, in my firebox I'm occupying 60% of the, of the square surface area in my firebox. Um, but if you were to adapt this design to a larger stove, I don't necessarily think you would need to make your basket any, any thicker than my basket is. The basket will, will by, by virtue of the larger size firebox, hang down lower and be, be wider in front of it. I, and I don't really think you need to have it thicker. So uh, ultimately, if you're going to scale this up for a larger size stove, you probably wanna stick with a 5 16 inch socket and uh, an inch and a half feed tube for your pellets coming down into it. But the way, the way you get a nice bend around this is you, you force the, the rod around the socket, applying your force as close to the socket as you can to bend the wire around it to keep it to hug you know keep it hugged nice and close to the socket and that way you don't end up bending it like if I was if I was to grab the rod here and try to bend it I would get a smooth bend 
going across the whole rod. So what I want to do is avoid the smooth bend. I want the rest of it to be straight. I just want the bend at the very bottom. So I'm going to just use the, the bottom of my hand and start this one going around. until it's just about at right angles with the first one that I haven't bent yet. Okay, and then I'll repeat the process on the other side. And I finish squeezing. Like so. And this one's done. Do this uh, 10 more times and I have my 11 pieces. And they will all be identical. <laughs> I, just, I just had a, a, a sickening moment there. I thought maybe uh, I had forgotten to hit the record button on my camera. Not that I would ever be so forgetful. <laughs> All right. And there you have it. Here are my 11 bent sections of stainless steel. Next I'll be lining these up with the 3 16 inch shims and clamping them together, welding them up. Okay, as I think I mentioned, in this particular build, I'm going to stagger my loops so that, and I'll exaggerate this so that you can see, so that one is hangs low, one is high, the next one low. I'll still have the 3 16 gap, but At the bottom, they'll hang like this. Uh, let's see if we can do this. Okay. So instead of all of the loops hanging like this, the same depth, the center loop, or every other loop, instead will hang like that. And I'll test it clamped up to see how well it holds pellets in and how, how freely it allows them to drop through. Now I'm going to want to take and move every other one inward just a little bit and um, well, let's, let's say I want to move them in 3 16 of an inch. I can't do it with that. Hmm. Let's try this. I've got uh, two sections of half inch wide by eighth inch. 
together makes a quarter of an inch. Let's offset it by one quarter inch and see what happens. So I'm just going to hold these two. Yeah, that works perfect. So I'll push that one in, quarter of an inch, move over to this one. I may have to actually, because I'm raising up every other every other loop, I may actually have to make this hang even lower in the firebox opening, lower closer to the floor. However, I can always raise it up by placing shims along the top ledge of the firebox opening that the uh, the pellet basket hangs on. So I'm never really locked in. So I'll just tighten it up now. And there you have it. Every other loop is staggered. I don't really know how well this is going to work, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, shove some pellets in here, hold it, and shake it, and see how easily uh, I'm going to hold it like this with pellets inside and I'm going to shake it and I'll see how easily I can shake pellets through and I'm going to compare it to where did I put it? Oh, I'm going to compare it to this. I'll do the same test. I'll put some pellets in it like this and I'll shake it and I'll see how easily unburnt pellets fall through the openings that I've made there. And once I have something roughly equal, then I know that I've got the right staggering. So here we go. This is my existing basket. And I'm just going to dump a few pellets in my hand here. Like so. Block it off. You'll notice a few do fall through. Not a lot. But if I shake it, I can force them to fall through. Now for the comparison test. Getting them in there is a little tricky. Okay. And again. That is just about the same, the same drop rate. So you know what? We're going to go with this. Just the way it is. I think uh, my loops are all pretty much even. In fact, they're all very much even. Okay. It's time to weld it up. Okay, I'm ready to weld. I've got my welder's helmet, auto darkening, my leather safety gloves. These will be my safety glasses. I need these to see. And uh, I'm going to take this assembly and just hold it in the vise while, while I weld it. Now, a word to the wise. This metal rod is very easy to burn through when you're welding. Those of you who have 
never welded or who had little experience welding or just maybe a little rusty, you definitely want to take a couple of pieces of scrap material and just play around with it, clamp them together, weld them, because it's real easy to apply too much heat. You end up cutting them off. Uh, you need to develop a, a little bit of finesse where you apply just enough heat to cause the metal to start melting along with your MIG wire, but not so much that it melts and drips right through and, and now you've cut the piece. So yeah, it's, it's a little tricky sometimes. Uh, it does take a, does take a, little, bit of, uh, a little bit of finesse but uh, this one is worth it. So, like this basket, I will take my bracing rod at about the same point along the edge of the loop, just behind where the loop stops bending, and that's where I'll wait, weld the little bracing rod that keeps them spaced properly. Oh, one last thing. A, uh, a piece of metal on your bench directly beneath your work is always a good idea. Like so. This also keeps some of the uh, some of the slag that that will spit off of this from falling to the floor. My uh, my floor mats have are already peppered with little pock marks from hot molten metal that have eaten into the plastic. Once again, I'm running this at 90 amps max max current at a fairly slow feed rate and I think I'll start with the very middle And it goes pretty quickly once you've gotten the hang of it. Okay, that's it. That side is done. I'm going to use my cutoff wheel. take off the excess and then do the other side. All right, I'm going to have to grind that one off. I did let it let it uh, drip down in a little bit. That was unfortunate. Okay, now these are still going to be very hot. So I'm going to leave my gloves on, but I'm going to take out these shim spacers and when I, when I weld the, the next brace higher up along the, the basket, I'll have my shims further back so that all of the tops are evenly spaced just like the bottoms were near the loops. And there you have welded basket, pellet basket. I guess we'll call this revision 2.2.
Okay, revision revision 2.0 was with all of the loops at the same depth and no material removed from the bottoms of the loops. Revision 2.1 was with all the loops at the same depth. Ooh, one of these welds does, didn't actually take. I'm going to have to redo this. Um, was with all of the loops even at the bottom, but every other pieces from every other section cut out and then a, a, another piece welded across the middle. I won't need that with this, and then this will be revision 2.2. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the same procedure for the metal bars five inches from the bottom from the bottom edge, which is where the other ones are. And that will complete this and then I'll cut off the ends to be all even. So, same procedure as last time, only this time I'll be do doing this section up here. So I'll be placing my spacers up, excuse me, up closer to the top. And fortunately now, these all hold themselves into position, so this is a little easier to stack together. So now the braces are ready to go on right across here for the top side. Last step is to add two little braces, one front to back on this side and front to back on this side so that the basket does not flex this way. Whoops. This is what happens when you apply too much heat. You end up cutting off a rod. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna weld this now back into place, end to end. Okay, we're almost complete. The only thing that's left to do is to take and set this in the firebox against a uh, three-quarter inch wood shim at the bottom of the firebox and then at the top with a sharpie mark on the edge where, where, where it comes to the edge uh, of the, uh, the lip of the firebox opening 
and that mark will be where I want to bend the edges outward to make ears the four corners like I did with revision 2.1a okay see that so that's how I locate the the point where I make the bend then I just cut off the excess lop off the excess uh, along the front and back and it will be done oh yes I almost forgot one more thing the handle in the middle I'll need an extra piece across the top to make a, ha a handle similar similar to this one as well can't quite put the welder away just yet okay so I've got my three quarter inch piece of wood I have my basket I'm just going to pull the air shroud off the top of the firebox and in fact you know I think I'll clean it out before I set the uh, piece of wood in there so give me just a minute to clean this out incidentally that is about four hours worth of burning at close to 800 degrees of ash. All right. So here I go. I'm going to set my piece of three quarter inch wood in the bottom. Set this in the opening. And with my Sharpie, just mark where it comes to the top lip here. And in fact, yeah, I'll mark exactly where it is. But I'm going to bend it a little bit higher because I want it to hang a little bit lower than three quarters of an inch. And then I can add shims on the side or I can just bend the ears down a little bit further to raise it up. that make the bend as tight as I can and when I'm done I'll bring this back over to the stove and check it for square that looks pretty close I'm just going to bring it over to the stove and check it for square and then uh, make my final adjustments. There it is. Pellet basket revision 2.2. .2. Ready for testing. But it's 10.30, so the testing will have to wait until tomorrow night. And that concludes the tutorial. Revision 2.1 with the sections cut out and the handle. Revision 2.2 with the staggered loops at the bottom, no sections cut out. All in all, I would say easier to assemble than this because I didn't have to worry about cutting them out. So, tomorrow night, we'll fire it up. Right now it is quarter to 11 p.m., a little late to fire it up tonight, but uh, We'll be doing it. We'll be firing it up tomorrow night. If you can, please join me live on ustream.tv forward slash zero fossil fuel. Or is it ustream.tv forward slash channel 
forward slash zero fossil fuel. I don't know. I'll post the link down below. Okay. Uh, also, I will be posting links to all of the materials that went into the making of these two baskets, the stainless steel, the MIG welding wire, uh, even the tools at Harbor Freight. I'll, I'll try to put, put links to those as well. Uh, everything that I used. And of course, don't forget your thermal, thermo your infrared thermometer to measure the output temperature of your stove as you're experimenting. That's it for now. Everyone take care. I hope you really enjoyed this series. Uh, I, I always want to say I think I'm done. I don't know if I'm done, but you know, I, I still have a couple of things that I want to do. I still want to line the aluminum foil on the uh, cement board, and I still eventually will get around to putting fins on the flute pipe. But other than that, I really think I'm done. So having said that, everyone take care. Please rate, share, comment, and subscribe to my videos. And as always, peace. Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Tuesday, February 11, 2014, and in this video, I'm going to be taking you step by step through the construction of the... <laughs> Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Tuesday, February 11, 2014, and in this video... Still can't remember what I want to say. Damn! Ah, uh, ah... Uh... Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Tuesday, February 11, 2014, and in this video... Mm. Hello everyone... <laughs> Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Tuesday, February 11, 2014, and this video shall be a tutorial, step-by-step, -step, start to finish, of my rocket stove, wood pellet, basket, <laughs> what do I want to call this? Uh, rocket stove, wood, mm, wood pellet system, rocket stove, mm, burning, rocket stove, wood pellet basket. Wood pellet great. Yeah, I like basket better. Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Tuesday, February 11, 2014, and this video shall be a tutorial, start to finish, of the Zero Fossil Fuel rocket stove wood pellet basket wood pellet burning system for the rocket stove. And that was redundant. And that sucks too. Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Tuesday, February 11, 2014, and this shall be a video tutorial on how to construct the... <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> <clears throat> the rest of it went so much better. <laughs>